I found my candidate. It's Marco Rubio. I hope that you will give him a chance to convince you that he should be your candidate, too. Well, the GOP campaign trail getting just a little more crowded as Congressman Trey Gowdy joins Marco Rubio in Iowa. So what made him throw his support behind the Florida senator? Let's ask him. Joining us now is the South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. So what, in the endorsement of Senator Rubio, what was the tipping point? Why Senator Rubio? Well, it's a combination of things. I've known Senator Rubio since 2010. Uh, Senator Jim DeMent from South Carolina uh, first introduced me to uh, then-candidate Marco Rubio. Um, I agree with him on issues, uh, national security, uh, the role of the, the chief executive in, in, in terms of his constitutional role to faithfully execute the laws. Uh, I also have, have been a, a great admirer of Senator Rubio's ability to express the, the message of conservatism and hopeful, aspirational, persuasive ways. I am not a terribly uh, hopeful, optimistic person. I'm a former <laughs> prosecutor. I'm actually cynical. So I, I greatly admire the Tim Scotts of the world and, frankly, Ronald Reagan and Marco Rubio, who can communicate our message in an aspirational, hopeful way. And, and that, to me, is persuasive. So when you uh, like someone personally, you agree with them on the issues, and you think that they're a really persuasive messenger for our for our movement, for our party, um, then uh, it made it kind of an easy decision for me. Well, what about the criticism? Obviously, as a fellow congressman, uh, you are in Washington on a regular basis. The fact that Jeb Bush, Donald Trump, Chris Christie, and others have criticized the senator for uh, missing, his, missing votes and then going out campaigning across the country and criticizing those very bills that he had an opportunity to vote upon. What do you make of that criticism? Fair? Well. I, I think in this day and age, probably everything is fair. I've heard criticisms of folks that I never thought I would ever hear. It, it's a tough business to run for president, and, and Marco has thick skin. Ultimately, you know, the people of Florida decide whether or not he's there a sufficient amount of time for them or not. I think Senator Rubio's point is uh, he's running for president to make those votes actually consequential. Um, and I think some of the criticisms are a little bit uh, unfair, and I'll tell you why. He's on Senate Intel. He has access to information way before I have it, way before his Senate colleagues have it. And when you're having public hearings on matters related to intelligence, uh, you're not going to learn anything in those public hearings. These, the, 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 the meaningful briefings are all done in private. So I think that criticism is, is probably a little bit uh, unwarranted. But ultimately, uh -huh. the people in Florida have to decide whether or not he's voting or not. You know, I imagine you're not surprised it didn't take long for Donald Trump to get out on Twitter because you endorsed Senator Rubio and not him to start, you know, throwing flames at you. He said this on Twitter for his 5 million followers. I hope Gowdy does better for Rubio than he did at the Benghazi hearings, which were a total disaster for Republicans and America. So, I mean, you may get more attacks from Donald Trump. It seems like anybody who pushes back on him, attack, attack, attack. Do you think there are other people out there who may be wanting to endorse other candidates other than Trump who are hesitant because they're concerned of the attacks? I don't think so. I mean, it, it's hard to be in this line of work and, and, and not be criticized at some point or another. And Mr. Trump is certainly entitled to his opinion. I've been married 26 years, so I, I'm, I've got sort of tough skin. It's not <laughs> the first time I've been and why not criticized. I, I, well, I've actually never met. Mr. Trump. I've never had a conversation with him. Uh, they tell me that he picked me to be his AG a couple of months ago. Um, I, I've actually never talked to him. I want to say this. Um, we've had uh, closing in on 80 hearings on the Benghazi. He's referencing one out of the 80. So I, I, w I would, because it's really important to me that people wait and judge the work of our committee when we issue our report, not based on 180th right. of our hearings. But he's entitled to his opinion, and, and, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm not going to criticize him just because somebody criticized me. That's a message for the new year. There we go. Uh, happiness there. Uh, all right, so, uh, Congressman Trey Gowdy, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate you out there in Iowa joining us for Happy just New Year, sir. Yes, Happy sir. New thank year. you. Happy New Year. We'll see you Happy in 2016.